Okay, and we are back for part three of Star Trek Resurgence, continuing right now. Oh, and actually, I did want to read what we have here on the pause menu. Captain Solano thought Jara handled a complex situation as well as could be expected when the Hotari Queen put her on the spot in the Queen's Chamber. I'm glad, because, yeah, that's exactly what I did. Uh, we've already read that. Ambassador Spock thought Jara performed well under pressure when she was being questioned by the Hotari Queen. That, can I also add, in the previous part, at one point Spock introduced Jara as having a keen mind. That seems like extraordinarily high praise from any Vulcan, and especially from Ambassador Spock. Like, that was... my heart went up <laughs> when that happened. We have read that. We've read that. Dr. Duvall was impressed by Jara's sense of responsibility to the crew, but would rather see her thinking independently than following Captain Solano's every order. Yes, I agree, but we will disobey orders when we have enough information to feel justified in doing so. Uh, we did that, and we've read that. Okay. So, now we're going to have a conversation with people behind the scenes and see if we can't find out more information about what actually went down. And this person standing by themselves seems like a good place to start. Except... Oh, okay. Such rough terrain. No wonder the Hotari are so tough. Oh. So, wait, but can I look at it? Yeah, some of this other stuff then. Hmm. Soothing. Now, the, 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 this is going to seem very, very basic. I don't know that we have a story recap here. The Dilithium is coming off of a moon. What I don't happen to remember is, like, the moon belongs to, I, I guess both of these planets, the Hotari and the Elidians, their planets are very, very close together, so it might not be that the moon belongs to one of them or the other, but I was just trying to remember, like, is the moon more geographically or astronomically one of theirs versus the others? Commander, I'm glad you've chosen to side with the Hotari. I knew the Federation would see through the Elidians' baseless claims and protect the interests of my people. To be clear, I'm not on either side of this conflict. Our only interest is peace. Hmm. I will keep that in mind. I assume you were there the day the mines were seized from the Elidians. Not seized. Reclaimed. And restored to their rightful owners. Yes, I was there. We had to be decisive before the Elidians could even realize their worst nightmares upon them. I don't know. Did you have help from someone else? Hotari stands alone against the Elidian forces. We don't need help from anyone. They respect one thing above all else, and that is force. The greater the force, the more certain the outcome. Any talk of making peace is just that, and worth little without the strength to secure it. Which makes me wonder about your ship, the Resolute. Undoubtedly the Federation's finest warship. Ready to contend with anything the Elidians might have in store. Or is that not true? Maybe I've misjudged it. It wasn't designed as a warship. More for scientific research and exploration. But the Federation must have ships designed for war. Technically, there are Starfleet ships representing the Federation. But yes. I see. Sidron. A pleasure meeting you, Commander. I'm sure we'll cross paths again. So here's the thing in an interaction like that. I don't feel the need to be to that guy, oh, don't worry, our massive war fleet is always in reach. If we need the fleet, we'll go get the fleet. We don't need to brag to that guy. Like, like, 
on a few different occasions, the, the option, like, this came up when it was like, um, when we went up to meet the queen in the previous part. It was like, show deference or show strength. Jara doesn't need to show strength. She just needs to be strong. And one of the key things to being strong is not going around and telling everybody, putting on a big show about how strong you are. Commander Rydeck, I'm encouraged to see the Federation supporting my people. I'm afraid of what might happen without your help. I'm glad to hear it. I just hope you're not the only one who feels that way. I apologize for that. These are unusual times, to say the least. Much is changing. I saw you speaking with Sidron, our national hero. I'm curious, what did he say? He seems to be of the opinion that negotiating for peace is a waste of time. Because force is the only blunt instrument he understands. He's a miner, not a diplomat. For the first time in our history, the Hutari have the upper hand. We see ourselves as strong instead of downtrodden. New voices have risen up. Old voices shouted down. Calvin and Sidron have become national heroes. Now, they have the Queen's ear. Better or worse, depending on your perspective. I get the sense you don't exactly trust them. I don't trust their instincts, which are leading us to war. My fear has been that the Illidians will launch an attack and crush us. You've seen their starship, no doubt. They could have retaken the mines whenever they wanted to. But it never happened. And as strange as this may sound, I'd almost say they're afraid. I just don't know what they're afraid of. It's still the same bluster and bravado you would expect from them. But it has no teeth. Like they're afraid of what might happen. Do you think it has something to do with the Ion Storm? Right now, it's stronger than ever, isn't it? It's entirely possible. I'm not a scientist, but I do know the storm has knocked out all kinds of systems. So maybe the Lydians weren't willing to risk their ships, given all the interference. Since the day of the revolt, Galvin has seized control of the mines and restricted all access. No one's allowed without his personal authorization. And they've taken over a section of the palace with just as much secrecy and security. I'm told it could be something they brought back from the mines. I've made inquiries, but everyone pretends it doesn't exist. I strongly suspect they're hiding something. Why would they do that? I don't know. But that's what concerns me. Whatever they're hiding, it can't be good. How can we know? I'd better see what's happening. Do you think you can find out what they're hiding? I need to see proof of something before I can make my case to the Federation. I can try, but even if I found it, I might not know what to make of it. Take this. You can use it to capture whatever you find, and then send it to me. Thank you. We're... I will let you know what I find. And I look forward to our meeting again. We're really giving up on any sort of plausible deniability by just straight Sorry. up... Sorry, I couldn't help but notice you were speaking with the Hotari this whole time. Straight up handing her a Federation tricorder. That's all I'm saying. I figured in the interest of fairness, I should offer another perspective. Of course. I'm probably not telling you anything you don't already know, but these negotiations rely on the Federation's neutrality, as does any hope you might have for a supply of dilithium in the future. So, why you would choose to side with the Hotari escapes me. Without a Lydian involvement, there is no dilithium trade. But clearly, you weren't aware. Of all my concerns, dilithium is not one of them. I could care less about securing a supply, now or in the future. I'd be curious to know if the rest of the Federation shares your indifference. 
A major solid arm inter, special attaché, Elidian armed forces. Pleasure to meet you, Commander. I have my issues with the Hotari, but I have to give them some credit. They know how to seize an opportunity. Inciting an uprising the same day as a massive once-in-a-lifetime ion storm. Our assumption was that this storm was just an anomaly. Yes, a very convenient anomaly. At least, that was what we were told. Of course, I wasn't there. But who am I to say otherwise? You sound skeptical. Well, the official story is that it was the storm that enabled the revolt. How else do a bunch of unarmed, unorganized miners seize control of an entire moon, much less thousands of mines? But I've talked to people who were there. They tell a different story. They say they're lucky to have escaped with their lives. That it was more than just the storm. That somehow the miners were able to harness the energy from the storm. I know it sounds crazy. I'm not even sure I believe it myself. But that's what they said. You just answered your own question. How do a group of miners do something that in theory can't be done? That's how. Harnessing the storm. But even if it's true, how does that even happen? You tell me. If you'll excuse me, Commander Ryder. Yeah, so I was going to talk to everybody anyway. Um, some of the dialogue in this particular scene has been a little bit clipped at the beginning. I don't know if that's due to the reverb that they put onto it to like make everybody sound like they're in this big hall. Uh, I'm overall really enjoying basically every part of this presentation. Like I, I haven't talked about it very much, but they've really nailed the sights and sounds and... Um, like, the attitude of Star Trek? Like, I'm really enjoying this so far. They seem proud of their culture. Pride can lead to rash action. Yeah, no, we'll go talk to him. Now, I myself, so I just press X, I do not have a tricorder. Yeah, handing her a tricorder to say, use this, it is yes, and I don't have any reason to believe that that woman whose name I haven't learned would like immediately turn over the the tricorder or falsify any readings. I'm just saying that like uh, Ambassador Spock was like, hey, poke around quietly and see what you can back channel. It's like I might have asked her, hey, do you have anything to take a picture with? Uh, you know, some sort of data scanner, something that maybe the miners use to locate dilithium. Maybe you just point it at whatever this object is. There was also a thing there where it was like, well, what did they find? Well, if she knew that, she probably would have said it. And the other, I don't remember what the other question was, but I went with why would they do that? Because it felt like the most constructive of the available options. Ditto goes with, um, the guy that we were just taking to, the Elidion guy. Well, that was a disaster. What happened? The Hotari refused to concede anything, so the Elidians stormed out. The Hotari did not invite us here as peacekeepers. I hope your efforts were more fruitful than ours. Gravitational harmonics failing to resolve. Warp bubble stability degrading. Increase output to maximum. Increasing warp output to maximum. It's happening again. It is evident that presently, the Resolute cannot achieve warp propulsion. Since our diagnostics rule out any problems with our warp systems or anything about the ship, the problem appears to be the fabric of space itself. Space itself? You're saying something about this region of space prevents warp travel? Prevents it, or can't sustain it. However improbable, that appears to be the case. We need to know more. The storm didn't stop us from leaving space dock and traveling here. 
But could it still be causing this interference with warp travel? We must follow sound investigatory principles. Do not let an assumed conclusion drive your analysis. Sometimes we need a little inspired thinking, Mr. Chobach. Captain Solano is on his way back from the negotiations, and I want to have some answers for him when he gets here. Indeed. Given the facts at hand, we may be able to deploy subspace probes around the ship to construct a clear picture of the phenomenon. Around the ship. I'll prep a shuttle. Boy, having a shuttle bay like that where you have to like pivot up or down well, I guess up in both directions. I'm setting up a waypoint at a distance roughly corresponding to the edge of our warp field. When we get there, I'll deploy the first probe. Okay, I'm gonna be very careful not to press X. I'm actually taking my hand off the controller. Fly the shuttle to your objective to complete a mission. Right trigger to go forward, left trigger to go backwards, right stick to turn, and left stick to strafe. B. Oh, there's more screens here. The ionic storm will fill your path with dangerous hazards. Green lighting will damage your shuttle. Taking damage three times will fail the mission. You can fly through the rings created by the storm if you pilot carefully. So green is bad, green is stop. Makes sense. Le uh, follow the lit path to reach the next waypoint. The navigation computer displays information about the area around you. Exclamation point indicates a storm hazard. Parentheses indicates an asteroid. Oh boy. I am not confident about doing this my first time, but... Oh, sorry. Right trigger to go forward. Don't hit the ship. So I'm not, like, waving it up and down. We're, like, we having some... The resolute systems are calibrated to receive the probe's readings. Turbulence. We are standing by to reproduce the warp field collapse after the first probe is deployed. Thank you, Mr. Chovak. We'll be in position shortly. And, Mr. Diaz, do take care in piloting the shuttlecraft. Now is not the time to indulge in the human penchant for joyriding. Chovak probably isn't such a fun guy to work for, huh? I just don't take it personally. At least I try not to. That's a very mature answer. Shows a positive attitude on your part. Remind me of it when I start complaining to you about the ship's new first officer. Yeah, she's awful. So, so far, no, no need to check our sensor readings. I mean, I am keeping one eye on our navigational scan but down there. But for the most part, we're just sort of dead ahead and haven't had any issues with green energy that we needed to worry about. This is far enough. Transporting the first probe into position. Westbrook here. The first probe is deployed. Understood. We are reading it. We are about to replay the simulation. Just not getting any traction with her. Commander Rydek. She rejected my plan to use a deflector pulse against the storm surge. She didn't listen to me when you were out on the hull and I was trying to make it safer for you. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with the new XO. I'm sure she's a fine officer, even if we don't see eye to eye. But she didn't go through what the rest of us did. You know that. And it's hard to figure out why she'd be the one Solano chose instead of, well, one of us. I don't really know anything about Commander Rydeck. Yeah, not many do. But you're right. She's definitely an outsider. <sighs> Maybe that's what Solano wanted all along. Test is running. Warp field collapse in three, two, one, mark. Right, that is definitely a problem with the fabric of space. We need to get another probe out there.
With two points of data, the Resolute and the Pro, we've managed to get an interference pattern. I'm setting a waypoint to a particularly strong area of interference. We'll deploy the second probe there. Listen, I'm gonna give you a piece of advice I wish someone had given me. Make sure you're never just one thing. And don't get so focused on what's in front of your face that you lose sight of the big picture. Before Rydex showed up, the captain pulled me into his ready room and told me he didn't think I had the people skills to be first officer. <laughs> what a load of crap. I mean, if he'd said that about Cholok, sure. I appreciate the advice, Commander. I'll make sure I keep my options open. I don't need to tell you how to operate. You're already well on your way. You're a capable engineer. You're good in the field. Keep up the good work, and who knows? A solid jack-of-all departments like you could be Commander-in-Chief of Starfleet one day. Hell, Admiral Jellicoe started as a shuttle pilot. And there are places to go in the enlisted ranks, too. Of course, if you get an officer's commission, they'll put you on another ship. You know, I'd be the best leader Starfleet ever had. Oh, Lower boy. decks always have to fix all the problems command causes. Maybe I'd just save everybody some steps. Well, don't forget about us little people when you're running things. Of course not. You gotta remember where you came from. That was not what I meant to say. Also, Admiral Jellicoe, shout out. I remember that episode. Here, this is close enough. Stop the engines. Deploying the probe. Westbrook to Commander Chovak. We're ready for another sampling of data. Very good. Running the simulation again. Warp field collapse in three, two, one. Fine. There it is again. I saw it. It seems to be directional. Well, what about the scans? Anything? Here's the readings in relation to our local space. We've got the Resolute, Otari Prime, and the probes. All this interference is overloading the sensor buffers. We're gonna have to triangulate the sensors manually. Um, locate interference peaks. I, oh, okay. There's one, I think. So do I press a button here? I, I, like, I'm pressing right trigger. It's not doing anything right now. We got something. These markers indicate peaks in the gravimetric interference patterns. Let's see if I can find some more. Yeah, I'm trying to find... I, I don't remember the name of the guy that played Admiral Jer Jer Jellicoe. Hold up. This is coming from the moon beam that blocks warp travel aimed right at us someone is doing this intentionally i don't know how they're doing it this is like nothing i've ever seen why would they be doing this we came here to help these people and now we're getting hit by some warp killing weapon now look here it's our current readings of the ion storm if these concentrations if they line up with the interference pattern the storm and this beam, they're coming from the same place. Carter, whatever petty local conflict brought us here, it's just a small part of something much bigger. Presently, we don't have an explanation for how they're doing this. But one thing is clear. This is no fluke. Thank you, Mr. Westbrook. I want a full briefing when I'm back on board. Solano out. A targeted weapon that inhibits warp travel. Coming from the moon Tau. That would explain the difficulties my shuttle encountered. More importantly, the tenor of the Hotari during the negotiations. And here I thought the Elidians would be the problem. Coming to peace talks in a warship. This wasn't supposed to be so complicated. For all their posturing, 
Every indication is that the Illidians are afraid of the Hotari. They didn't bring their warship as a threat. They brought it because they're scared. From everything we witnessed, I would say that is highly likely. But what are they afraid of? Tylus, the Hotari representative, said she thought they found something in the mines. Galvin and Sidron brought it back to the palace, but they're keeping it under tight security. She's going to investigate it. I gave her my tricorder. I expect she'll contact us soon. You found an ally. Why would Tylus help us? Go behind her people's back? It's a fair question, considering. Um, I really don't know. She doesn't like the way Galvin and Sidron have been manipulating the situation. And the Queen. Working with us to go around them isn't the same as betraying her people. Hmm. That may be true. She's certainly more likely to help than the other Hotari we've met. That raises another question. Specifically, what do the other Hotari have to gain in bringing us here, only to make this hostile maneuver against us? There must be some motivation. Unless they change their minds between when they asked and when we got here. Sidron was very curious when we spoke outside the Queen's chamber. He wanted to know all about us, our ship, the Federation. He wasn't giving any answers. He was looking for them. Well, I'm sure you didn't tell him too much. I don't think the Illidians know what's really down on that moon either. Major Arminta said the revolt defied explanation. That the Hatari miners somehow harnessed the energy of the storm. Harnessed the energy of the storm? Doing that is beyond even our capabilities. So is a weapon that disrupts warp travel. There have been civilizations and entities, both past and present, far more technologically advanced than the Federation. The Illidians and Hotari don't fall into that category. But that is all the more reason to investigate further. Commander Rydek, sorry to interrupt. I've received an urgent call from Hotari. The Queen's advisor, Tylus, is asked to speak with you. Put her through. Galvin and Citron are still with the Queen. I've enlisted help to gain access to the room they have under guard. I don't have much time. I'm not supposed to leave my post. It's only for a moment. I so appreciate your help. I found something. I'm sending you a scan. Got it. Tylus, if we needed to gain access to the mines on Tau, is that something you could help us with? I suppose it wouldn't be easy, but... I have to go. Tylus! Can we reconnect? Sorry, Captain. We've lost all contact. We can only hope she escaped without harm. It was hard to tell. Tylus wouldn't have offered to help if she didn't know what she was doing. That's a lot of faith in someone we barely know. Let's see the scan of whatever the hell that was. Tylus suspects this came from the mines on Tau. It appears to be of ancient origin, but the markings are unfamiliar. We can run a full analysis when we get back to the Resolute. But if this came from the mines, then it might be the key to how they got the upper hand against the Lydians. Then we have to go into the mines. The Federation would not allow that. We were, after all, sent here to be a neutral party in a peace negotiation. However, we could demonstrate that the Hotari have acted in bad faith which would enable us to investigate the mines on Tau with full justification. But of course, we would need conclusive proof before taking action. Otherwise, it could put us in a difficult position. Whatever this artifact is may be proof enough, at least to satisfy the Federation. Hmm. Especially if we can show the Hotari are controlling the warp disruption. 
hand targeting the Resolute. We may have a better understanding once we analyze the device. But a mission to the mines, covert or otherwise, is not out of the question. And I will handle the Federation. But the volume levels just do whatever they want in this game. As I was telling Carter, I want all the data I can get on this warp problem. And the negotiating team's shuttle has been recording data all the way back from Hotari. Even better than our probes. So pull the sensor and engine ISOs from the Melville when it sets down. We'll do. I'll join you in Chovak down in engineering to run another analysis after the briefing. I didn't like this warp problem when we thought it was some astronomical anomaly. And I like it a hell of a lot less now that we know someone is doing it to us. How does it work? What do we even do about it? What do you say we pull these chips and find out? It took some damage on the way. That ionic interference scored the hull plating. Might be some micro welds. Let's try pulling together. All right. Three, two, one. It won't budge. Gotta be the storm damage. We need to... Welcome back. Any excitement down on the surface? Excitement? No. Nothing like that. Hey, can you hand me the EJ-7 interlock? From the toolbox. I don't know what that is. Not much use for one on a security detail, huh? Carter? Yeah, I'll get it. Because I definitely know which one that is. What's up? Are we getting the, the cold shoulder now? I'll apply pressure while you decouple the panel. Uh. Here, I'll help. <laughs> We've got this. Open up and say ah. Thanks for the hand. We have to get these isolinear chips down to engineering. No problem. You really know everything about these ships, don't you? The tools, the systems. Like a walking Starfleet technical manual. Well, I wouldn't say everything. But I know my stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I can see that. Come on, start pulling chips. I just I want you to know that like this is as fast as you can scroll around on here. Uh yes. Uh okay. this some kind of crystal formation uh, okay and now now suddenly it's much uh, much faster whoa this substance is a quantized spin crystallization of hydrogen carbon and lithium it's emitting tetrametric pulses at an interval of 3.8422 seconds Quantized crystallization isn't natural. I mean, it's only theoretical as a means to engineer matter on a subatomic level. What's it doing in there? Hold on, can we like put on a glove first? Wait, regulation 364 subsection nine. What? 
Regulation 364, subsection 9, orders that in the case of an unknown foreign substance infiltrating a sealed system, it will be placed in secure confinement before further examination. Retrieve a containment module. Don't you think we're more equipped to deal with whatever this is? No. Before anything else, this is a security issue. You don't even know what this is. Which is why we need to study it. Once it's contained. Well, if it's not natural, then someone might have put it there. It could be a tracking device. <laughs> some kind of sabotage. Or even a bomb. Which is why we need to get it to the containment lab. Come on. I can't make an exception. Not even for you. I'm still going to report these crystals to Commander Westbrook when we send the shuttle data. And I will inform my superiors. I'm taking this just as seriously as you are. But I overheard talk about the warp disruption on the shuttle. Now these crystals? Maybe this situation is more than we can handle with just a science vessel. We could trigger a distress call, get Starfleet to send more ships, or I could send a message to my old CO on the Adirondack. Get some combat-tested vessels. We shouldn't do this alone. Miranda, you gotta be more careful. If someone hears that, they could think you're talking mutiny. I'm just trying to figure out how we can help. Okay, stand back. Get this to the containment lab. We'll get it set up for you. I'll let you know when it's safely confined. Oh, we'll be there. Last thing you want is to study this down in main engineering and have it explode next to the warp core. Mm. Almost forgot. <sighs> Can't have that. For a second, I thought she'd gone cold on you. Like she might have changed her mind. But I guess this whole situation has her spooked. Maybe she knows more than us? Or it's because this is all happening so fast? But she usually doesn't scare easy. Well, of course she's taking it seriously, but that's her job. When she's on duty, she's got to be on the lookout for danger. Yeah, but talking about sending a distress call on her own... That's going too far. It is. She was probably just thinking out loud. I'm sure she'll come to her senses. This mission has enough complications stacking up. Now we'll get through it. You, me, and Miranda too. Yeah, that's, I'm just saying, that's super weird. Like, oh, hey, we found this weird crystal. Uh, our ship is currently stranded with some sort of an anti-warp beam aimed at us from that moon over there let's trigger a, a distress signal without consulting the captain of the ship or the xo who i know is brand new but still also in the chain of command based on the information they have now that would be a radical step and can you imagine a whole bunch of starfleet ships coming in here warping in here escalating with their bristling weaponry a diplomatic situation that is already tense and then they ask the captain, why did you set, signal the distress call? And he says, I didn't. And then they find out that Miranda or Diaz or the third person who's... So so we haven't looked at Carter's page here, uh, Ed Salar, at all, um, had done it. Like, they wouldn't be out of Starfleet. They would be in a jail cell. Like, you just can't do that. Uh, Ed Solar was reminded how much she values her friendship with Carter when she, he said she doesn't owe him anything for letting her go first on the hull. Of course she doesn't. We didn't do that to get a prize on the other side. Miranda noticed Carter's unusual, or sorry, usual confidence was tempered by some much needed humility when she returned from Hotari. Okay, I mean, he just wasn't a jackass about it. What is it, again, what does he need to show off to her? I'm just telling you, if the key to her heart was goofing around with tools and showing off, it's not, the relationship is off to a really bad start. Lieutenant Commander Chovac agreed with Carter's purely logical approach to working on Ambassador Spock's shuttle. Did he? Because I feel like we got reprimanded again for it. 
Commander Westbrook enjoyed his conversation with Carter, coming away with the impression he's smart, pragmatic, and confident in his knowledge of the ship. Okay, well, that's good, because that one thing that he said where he was like, um, um, oh, maybe I'll be in charge of all of Starfleet, because we do all the real work. Like, oh, boy, that's not what I meant. I just meant that maybe the prospect of working my way up into other fields and on other ships would be something that he would look forward to. That's all. Not, can you get me a promotion? That was one of the other options. No. Ambassador Spock was impressed by Carter's skilled use of the tractor beam to rescue his shuttle. And he was left with the distinct impression that Carter is a team player. Good. Good. I'm, I'm very happy with all of these things. Was there anything else that we wanted to check in here? Let me just see, um, did we get anything new here? Captain Solano liked Jara, Jara's pragmatic approach to any danger Tylus might encounter by helping the Federation. Right, like, she, she appears to have been a, like, like an advisor to the Queen who was displaced by the more militant forms of the mining faction. That doesn't mean that I trust her. It means that I trust her motivations. It doesn't mean that we can just inherent, implicitly trust whatever she does, but we know why she's willing to work with the Federation. She doesn't trust what the miners are doing. Would she lie or fabricate evidence to bring the Federation onto what she perceives to be her side in this internal political conflict? I don't know that yet. But what I do know is that when she agreed to take the tricord and go in, she is confident that she can do it. Jara didn't blackmail her into doing this she did so of her own accord uh we already read that thought jar performed well under pressure yes we read that yes 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 and yes okay commander rydeck was able to work behind the scenes during the negotiations and made contact with a representative from the hotari delegation named tylus she mentioned an unusual artifact of unknown origin being held under tight security within the Hotari Palace, which she believes came from the mines on Tau. Now, this artifact might have a connection to the revolt, to the storm, and to the warp disruption we now know has been targeted at the Resolute. Commander Rydick, if you want to take it from here. Of course. Tylus managed to infiltrate the heavily guarded location within the palace and sent us these scans using my tricorder. It appears to be some sort of control panel, possibly connected to the warp disruption weapon originating on Tau. Of particular interest is this symbol, which we couldn't identify the origin of. The Federation database has records from a vast number of civilizations. If anyone from Starfleet has come across this before, the system should recognize it. Cross-referencing with Federation records. Displaying symbols from Federation database with a 90% probability of match or higher. Select a symbol to further analyze. I don't know why we called the meeting so that everybody could watch me look in the encyclopedia. Uh, down. No. There's probably some hidden references in here. Like, I, I'm not recognizing any of these symbols. Like, I recognize the Klingon symbol. Uh... Doesn't really look like it, though. No. Oh, we've gone all the way through. Okay, so let's start picking out things that look like they could be like scattered petals or something like that doesn't really look like it um this is at least vaguely circular Ninety-nine point two percent match got it So, what are we looking at? The design and composition indicate this is a glyph associated with the ancient Khan Empire. Their civilization collapsed over 600,000 years ago, but once spanned millions of systems with a population numbering in the trillions. Fascinating. The Takan were once the most advanced, most powerful civilization in the galaxy. 
Is it possible the Hotari found Takan technology? I wonder if they even know what they have. Our knowledge of the Takan is limited. I have only encountered passing references to them. Actually, I've heard of the Takan. You have? Quite impressive, Commander. Computer, summarize the Enterprise D's discovery of a Takan outpost. On Stardate 41386.4, the USS Enterprise D, under the command of Captain Jean Luc Picard, discovered a Takan outpost in the Delphi Ardu system. According to the mission summary, an unbreakable energy draining field was deployed against the Enterprise and a Ferengi ship. The Enterprise was only able to escape after negotiating their release with an entity known as Portal 63, Guardian of the Takan Empire. Unbreakable energy draining field? It starts to make sense. What else is there? There's a lot here. Let's take it piece by piece. Select the aspect you wish to learn more about. Well, how about the dude who can get us out of here? Someone from the Takan Empire is actually still around. Or at least was. 16 years ago. Computer, what other information do you have on Portal 63, Guardian of the Takan Empire? The entity known as Portal 63 is of an unknown nature. A biped humanoid, he was unaware that the Takan Empire no longer existed at the time of the encounter. He was able to control the crystal based technology of the Takan outpost through apparent telepathic means. It was by his choice that the Enterprise was released from the energy draining field after Commander William T. Riker of the Away team argued on behalf of both Starfleet and the Ferengi. Telepathic control of their technology. As I have said, they were the most advanced civilization in the galaxy. That was also the, uh, the episode where Riker, as I recall, goes to commercial going, Anybody? <laughs> Sorry, I need to get over here. I'm, I'm using the wrong stick. Um, well, let's learn more about this then. Oh, Starfleet restrictions. I don't know anything about that. The technology to capture and hold the Federation flagship would have to be unbelievably powerful. Computer, what else can you tell us about the energy draining field the Takan used? The Enterprise D was unable to break free on its own. The precise nature of the technology was never fully understood. Only that the crystalline technology used was beyond the comprehension of then-current Starfleet science. The engineering team found a quantized spin crystal formation in the shuttle you took to Hotari. They registered tetrametric radiation coming from it. We have Takan technology on board right now? We might. I'll run a full analysis in the containment lab. Also, like, that dude, yeah, that dude, like, took his halberd and, like, did this sick spin move by basically speeding up the recording and then, like, brought it down right in Riker's face and didn't even flinch, and that's how he knew that Riker was serious business. There appears to be some sort of restriction order from Starfleet. Computer, explain this restriction. A Starfleet directive similar to General Order 7 forbids entering the Delphi Ardu system or attempting to make contact with Portal 63. Starfleet doesn't throw up a no trespassing sign for just anybody. I suppose it makes sense considering what happened to the Enterprise D. What sort of planet is Delphi Ardu 4? Delphi Ardu 4 is an M class planet. A barren, rocky world with little to no vegetation and frequent ion storms. The giant crystals that grow there absorb energy, but it is not understood how they do so. The entire Delphi Ardu system, consisting of 11 planets, was considered completely uninhabited until the encounter with Portal 63. Frequent ion storms. That can't just be a coincidence. The Elidians should have crushed the revolt. But if the Hotari have Takan technology and can control it, See why they're willing to negotiate peace. For all we know, this could be just the beginning. And we're up against something greater than we can imagine. For now, it's probably best we don't let on how much we know. Mm. Play our cards close to the vest. Smart. I agree. Then when the time is right, we can confront them. Diplomatically, of course. But right. We've been able to triangulate the source of the ionic interference and warp disruption to a specific mine on Tau. Engineering used the latest data from your shuttle to pinpoint its origin. There. So we know where to look. 
We need to know what's down there. What the Hotari are hiding. To better understand what we're up against. And to neutralize it if we can. Captain, embarking on a mission to the Hotari moon would not be viewed favorably by either side. However, given the circumstances, we are entirely within our rights to defend ourselves. I just want to make sure this doesn't blow up in our faces. Which is why I'm thinking of sending Commander Rydek on a covert mission to Tau. Assuming you're up to the task. It would require absolute secrecy. And obviously, it's not without risk. I'll get the away team in and out. They're in safe hands with me. Under normal circumstances, that would be the case. Given the sensitive nature of this incursion, I'm afraid you'll have to go it alone. I'm hoping Tylus can accompany you. The priority is to avoid detection. It's a calculated risk. The last thing we need is to get caught and then blamed for violating our neutrality and aggravating an already tense situation. We can't afford any mistakes, which is why I've chosen you. It's a risk we have to take. We need to know what we're up against. Agreed. And of course, you'll have the full support of the Resolute throughout. We must take every precaution. Get in touch with Tylus and make the necessary arrangements as discreetly as possible. Bridge to Captain Solano. The Olydians have moved additional ships to the edge of the Hotari system. Current heading is straight for the homeworld. Understood. It would seem we no longer have the luxury of waiting. In that case, may I suggest you and I return to Hotari Prime? Doing so. We'll provide Commander Rydek as much time as possible to complete her mission. Agreed. We'll hail the Queen's delegation from my ready room. We all know what we need to do. Dismissed. Okay, actually, I feel like that would be a great place to break this part. Uh, it's, it's coming in a little bit under an hour, but that's cool. And we will hopefully see you for part four in just a very short time.